In this program, we're going to be going over um, Chapter 7 from Building Java Programs Edition 4. Chapter 7 is about arrays, and we're going to be looking here at self-check number 4, odds array. So they want us to write a code that creates an array named odds and stores all odd numbers between negative 6 and 38. Okay, so um, first let's talk about how to create arrays. So if you've read Chapter 7, you know that uh, when we're creating arrays, we first have to declare the type. So in this case, we know that they are integers. Um, we, we know that they're odd numbers, and it doesn't say anything about floats. So we're going to assume that they're, those are integers. And the format of array, whereas you normally would call an array, uh, sorry, an integer, you would just say int odds. Uh, sorry. Uh, when you're calling an array, you need to put these open close brackets uh, between the variable type and the variable name. So you could create an array of strings by calling that string. Um, but we're gonna, but uh, we're going to declare this this integer array odds. And then, like all Java classes, true classes, you're going to create new. But there is something different about the way that arrays work. In order to be compatible with how I think they chose because how, how C works. Uh, whereas you would normally do new and then you type the name of the class, for example, uh, random. Um, let's just review that for a second. Let's suppose I'm going to create a random op object. So we're using the random class. You would do new random. And then you always have to have parens, okay? Even if you don't actually pass a param parameter in. That's how you would would do a new random object um, but in this case so you would think um, maybe I, I would put the name of the class here but integers uh, they're there you don't do that it's different okay instead you put the the type okay int and then you put brackets here and we're gonna put how many numbers we want to how big we want to make that array okay so now let's think about how many numbers are here so negative six to thirty-eight, and there. Uh, so the the trick is that we want the odd numbers, right? So what are those numbers? Let's let's think about this for a second. So we're going to be odd numbers. So that's negative five, negative three, da da da, all the way up to thirty-one, thirty-five, thirty-seven. Okay. So how many is that going to be? That's going to be one, two, oh, here, let's just do it. We're already there. Three until you get to zero. Okay. And then we go starting with one. So there's three numbers before zero. And then if, let's say we were counting to, to, to four. Okay. That would be two numbers here. Um, so to go to 38, there's actually going to be 30, uh, uh, 38 divided by 19, 19 numbers here. So 19 plus 20 plus 21 plus 22 numbers, okay? So we need 22 numbers. So that's what we're going to put here, 22. Okay, so that creates, that's the first part. They want us to create an array of odds. So this is the, the same format that you would use to create any array. You could do double uh, these equals new double of 10. Okay, let's create an array of 10 doubles. All right, so the next half of the problem is make the array size. Okay, we did that already. Uh, we have to store all the odd numbers from negative 6 to 38 using a for loop. Okay, so um, this should be pretty easy for you guys to figure out. You're going to do for int um, index equals, we're going to start with 0. Okay, so that's the first important point. So this array always is indexed starting at element 0. Okay. So we're going to go element 0 while uh, index is less than. Now we can do this several ways. We could do 22, but I'm just I'm going to take advantage of the fact 
that you can actually determine the length of an array by doing the array's name dot length. Now, notice that dot length, this is not a method. Okay, a method would require parens here. This is actually a variable on this this uh, array here. And again, this is completely different than <laughs> any other class that you're going to learn about. So you just have to remember, remember that this is different. Um, so let's go to, uh, we have to increment the index. Okay, so that's going to give us a loop over all the uh, elements. Okay, I'm not going to say numbers, I'm going to say elements. Okay, now these elements are going to be odd numbers. So now we need to store store the odd numbers. So a couple of co different ways you could do this. You could start out with negative 5 and then you could add 2 each time. That would work. But you can also programmatically calculate this. So we can do odds. And so the next the third thing we're going to learn is how do we index items. So uh, whereas um, well let me let me write this out first. So what we do is we do odds index equals something, okay? Um, but I want you to, to recall. Well, let me let me finish this first, and I'll I'll talk about how strings are different. So it's going to equal the index times two. But when the end, this is what I always tell my students: when you're doing a loop, always look at what happens for the first value. When index is zero, that this is going to evaluate to zero, but what do we need? We need negative five. Okay. So we put negative five there. We know that by doing index times two, it's going to be the right distance between each of these numbers. It's going to create two between each number, but we just have to get the offset correct. This is the same way that I teach my students how to figure out nested loops. Okay. When you're, when you're trying to figure out what the uh, formula is, for in in your for loop, you figure out what is the slope. Okay, that's you're, they're going up by two each time. That's the slope, and then what's the offset? Okay, negative five. All right. So first, let's just see if this works. Okay, so that works. But now I want to show you a different way to do it. So instead of calculating like this, let's try doing uh, int value equals negative five. Yeah. And then we'll do odds index equals value, value plus equals two. Let's see if that works. All right, so that works just as well. It might be easier for you to think think of it that way. Now, I wanted to, re to return and look at strings. So remember, we just learned a couple chapters ago about strings. Um, if we wanted to, um, well, you can't actually set. Uh, a string, but but if we wanted to get index into uh, an array uh, into a string, we would do. Um, I'm gonna have to do this outside, really. String s equals hello, and then we can do. If we want to get a character out of this, we can't do s. A four. Okay, that would be the last character here. You could do that in. Um, I think you could do that in Python, but in C, that's the way you would do it. Okay, but they don't let you do that here because uh, they don't want that to. Uh, it's not going to work if you have double byte characters. So instead, you have to do s dot care at, uh, which is a method. Four. Okay, so that works differently then um, for arrays. You can't just index into it in, into a string. You have to use caret, whereas arrays, you can actually index into it. Um, you know, another thing uh, I want to show is you can also, um, you can not only use this as what we call an L value, meaning a left-hand side, so you can store into it, but you can also use it as an R value, or the right-hand side, so you can get the value out of it just as easily. So what if we do this? 
uh, mods. Okay, so now it actually, it, the, the test failed, but it did print out all those values, negative 5, negative blah, blah. It didn't list them all, unfortunately, but it does work. So I just wanted to show you that. All right, so um, in review, there are three things that this problem um, kind of introduces. Uh, it's pretty early on on this array chapter. So first is, what is the what is the structure look like to declare an array? Okay, so remember, you're going to use the regular data type, whatever it would be. And you can even use your own classes if you've learned how to do that yet. And then you need to put these array brackets after it. Okay. Then you have to declare new. It's going to create an object with that same data type. And then you're going to tell it how many elements you're going to create it with. Um, that's one thing. Uh, second thing is we talked about how to oh yeah how to access the length okay so dot length without parens um, is a way you can access the length of an array which is different than if you're doing the string dot length which is a method and then the third thing is how do you access an element here and you can just use the square brackets to index into it actually I guess the fourth thing is start your indexes with zero okay for arrays it always starts with zero that is similar to strings okay so there's four different things that we've kind of introduced with this problem here. So if you found this useful, please like and subscribe. I have a complete curriculum on uh, building Java programs with a lot of these practice it problems as well. You can check out my um, week one orientation for how you can get set up with practice it.